what is more interesting in it let us explore more about general architecture in this session let us start this webinar by welcoming you all i request our beloved principal of miras professor parasuth rajan sir to deliver the welcome address thank you inia for the nice start a uh, very good afternoon to one and all and a warm welcome to our speaker guest speaker for uh, today's uh, webinar Mr. Dr. Ilango from the School of Architecture and Planning, an NST. Welcome, you, sir. Thank you, thank you. A warm welcome to all the aspiring architects to become super architects of doing this master's program in general architecture under this new regulation of an NST 2021. And our speaker for today. is very much involved in making up this syllabus playing his eminent role as advisor as a committee member for syllabus framing so he is the right person to talk about it the goodness of this or the greatness of this particular emark general architecture program so we have the right speaker we have the right platform that is the platform of ms teams to give you the virtual feel or make you this open house to discuss on to idea to discuss on and also to have a one to one close interaction on this particular <laughs> program of masters in architecture especially general architecture so once again i welcome you all and happy learning and let us take this as a discussion so that it can be a dialogue for our understanding and for our betterment of understanding this great program especially the new regulation of 2021 and its goodness for this entire profession of architecture not only just architecture and also how it helps in getting the cross stitches across various professions in one single program so with this once again i welcome you all and uh, definitely our speaker is going to give us a lot of insight on this program and uh, let us sit back and listen to him so over to uh, prof jayaram good morning sir uh, i welcome our uh, chief guest ilango uh, sir uh, dr ilango is basically an academician as uh, associate professor he is working in uh, department of architecture school of architecture and planning and university chennai uh, since uh, july 2012 He has got lot of additional responsibilities there as a coordinator of office of the controller of examinations, deputy controller of office of examinations, and uh, he was like a student counselor and program officer. He did it. Uh, he did his uh, uh, philosophy in doctorate in biomimicry and architectural design process from the Faculty of Architecture, SAP Anna University, from 2006 to 2015. The title for the topic is uh, identification of relative significance of criteria for evaluating architectural design. A case of housing typology challenge in the area. He has got lot of uh, specialized uh, disciplines in sustainable design, green building design, energy efficiency, biomimicry, and architectural design processes. He has got lot of membership from professional organizations, uh, from Council of Architecture, uh, Indian Institute of Architects, Indian Institute of Interior Designers. and indian society of uh, lighting engineers as a fellow he has uh, done lot of, uh, he has helped many researchers to complete a uh, phd and he is basically a research guidance professor he did a uh, lot of publications in journals uh, almost nine research papers published in international level uh, like multi criteria analysis of design decisions identification of parameters for evaluation architectural design etc Uh, so many uh, achievements are there. Uh, with this short time, I cannot uh, uh, explain all the details of the book uh, speaker. So I just give some glimpse of uh, some of the books he has published, like Design Evaluation, Managing Resource Efficiency, uh, Inspiration from Honey Bee Hives, uh, published by Shanlax Publications. Another book he published in Preferences and Relative Significance Design Processes, and some of the projects. 
uh, as a current sponsor. Uh, he is working in e-content uh, development for postgraduate uh, subjects architecture, that is EPG Part Shala, from September 20, 2011 to 2015, and the project cost was around uh, 1 crore 12 lakhs rupees. And another uh, current sponsor for the project was Expert Committee Member for the proposal to establish integrated modern bus, bus, bus port facilities at Salem, and the cost of the project was 3 lakhs. There are some of the uh, programs also he has organized at national level, international level, and he was the coordinator for national level workshop on architectural detailing from, uh, from 2010, uh, 25th October to 27th October. And he attended international level conferences, national level conferences, and um, he participated in many uh, conferences, and he has published papers in that field. Some special representation about him is he was an expert uh, member in Special Committee in Council of Architecture, member in Action Plan on Climate Control, members as an Executive Committee in Office of the Control of Examination. He has got best awards uh, in terms of honors like Birla Yuva Ratna Award given by Aditya Birla Group from India 2009, 2010, and 2011. He has extended and uh, conducted the outreach programs. Uh, coordination for, as a coordinator in green building concept participated by students of architecture and funded by UGC at SAP and IMC. He has a for, program coordinated for the uh, performance evaluation tools for sustainable building uh, as a he conducted as a two phase um, program and I was part of a phase in that program. Uh, I want to add one more important thing about the honor which he has received. He has, uh, he has got a sponsorship grant worth of UK pound 99,706 uh, GDP on climate resilient, energy secure, and healthy environment. The so British Council is a part of going global partnership in the India UK partnership. There are so many things I can even more uh, I can tell about our doctor, the professor, and uh, I think the time is. Uh, to this uh, explanation. Sir, the floor is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Balsi Professor uh, Bairam and sir. And of course, Vinaya, my student, so very nice to uh, hear so many things from all of you. And again, uh, sir, I'm at Audible. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, maybe, maybe the, yeah. Mics can be muted and yeah. So, German sir, your mic. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, it's it's a wonderful opportunity for me to uh, interact with uh, lovely people and all the students. Like as uh, principal said, like the future. Uh, you know. Uh, in aspirants like who wants to take up uh, the post graduation course and uh, yeah it's uh, i think last year also i made a presentation and uh, this year now i'm i'm trying to orient you know the presentation in a slightly uh, the other way around because uh, uh, i i thought of like you no know, making a presentation in such way that like we need to understand like what are the challenges in front of us so that like we need to prepare ourselves for that so that like you now we can decide that will give us an you know, easy uh, you know choice for us to take a call whether we need to uh, strengthen uh, our uh, you know uh, whatever skills like we have or like whether uh, uh, the current uh, uh, whatever uh, qualification we have is sufficient so maybe like you now i'll i'll uh, uh, take into the presentation so uh, maybe you can just take it down, whatever clarifications or doubts like you wanted, like uh, I'm ready to help you in that way. Thank you. So let me just get into the uh, presentation. Uh, my screen is visible. Hello? Yes, sir, visible, sir. Yeah, it's, it's clear, yes. Yeah, please, please go ahead, yes. So, uh, broad content of uh, the presentation is like this. 
uh, maybe I just wanted to uh, before we need to learn or uh, we need to know about like you know, why we need to do uh, you know post graduation. So I want to uh, tell uh, all of you that like not all the factors that are changing the architectural profession for uh, for the past uh, so many years, particularly you know uh, past a few years because of this pandemic and so many other things and technological advancements and uh, global crisis and so many other things, you know, which makes us which questions like you now the, the future existence of our uh, profession itself, like you no, know, so that I thought of okay, let me have slight discussion on that, and which leads to what will be the future of our architectural practice. So then I thought like probably I can just throw some information or light on what are the new specific challenges which we all need to acquire as an architects, and uh, 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 that I wanted to you know throw a little uh, you know light on that, and then the important question is like how do I decide which master's course to pursue after architecture? In which, like, I want all of you to do a kind of self-assessment in such way that, like, you now we are the best uh, person to decide about what we need to do. So that is one. And in the due course, like, you no, know, uh, our profession is also you no know, representation with a lot of uh, women. But unfortunately, the role of women in the profession is like you know, very little. So I wanted to, uh, you know, throw some light on that so that, like, you no, know, we. Can get you know a lot of potential, uh, you know, women uh, architects uh, who can get some confidence and then join uh, further to contribute more into this uh, profession. And then of course, like certain uh, questions which has been asked, okay, from your side uh, about uh, what is the difference between the bachelor degree and master degree, and uh, whether it is required in a profession, uh, is it worth uh, doing it? And finally, I wanted to. Uh, uh, throw some light on what are all the curriculums and syllabus of masters uh, in architecture, particularly general architecture, which is going to be the 2021 regulation, which is the latest one. I think last year we were discussing on 2019 regulation, and this time I think uh, we'll be discussing on 2021 regulation, which is there in the Anainistry website. So this is about the broad content of my presentation. And uh, Uh, as we all know that an architecture is a journey. During the journey, like you no, know, we discover uh, no, many things. We discover architecture. We discover life. We, dis we rediscover about ourselves. We rediscover about like you no, know, the link between the, the the human and then the uh, surroundings, architecture. There are so many things like you no. Know, that's the beauty about this uh, particular uh, profession, this uh, particular course, and uh, we uh, do a lot of you know. Self evaluation at every time, like you know, whenever like you know, we talk about architecture, we always try to link about uh, you know, so many other things. So that is the major statement which I wanted to make, like before you know, we proceed further into uh, the discussion that architecture is a long road to success. Like you no, know, it's like uh, any other uh, profession. Like most likely, the 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 medical profession has something similar to that. Like you no, know, it is a long road to success, but once they are clear a certain stage, like you no, know, after that is a, a steep, uh, no, uh, elevation for them. But for us, like you know, it's a constant, you know, uh, long road of uh, uh, success. But don't worry because the other, uh, you don't have to get the monetary benefit because you will get to know more about yourself. Like you no, know, you are the best teacher for yourself. Uh, life can teach so many other things, and architecture can teach, you know, so many other things. So. When it comes to you know the factors that are challenging the architecture profession on today's context, I, I told you like before we take up uh, you know uh, your self evaluation or decide like now whether we need to do you no know, masters or not, we need to think about what are all those challenges which are there in front of us for uh, today's uh, context. First and prior most thing is the technology, because why the technology is very important in the sense like. Every profession, every department has has taken the technology to the fullest. But architecture in the in the developed countries, it has been taken. But the country like you uh, know India, you now we are trying to you know adapt to it uh, slowly. And uh, the clients are becoming more sophisticated. The clients are 
traveling a lot and then their access to all the uh, gadgets and their access to uh, Pinterest, their access to, you know, Google. So which tells like now they are well informed. Most of the time they are wrongly informed also because whatever they think, you know, it is it's correct and then they 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 uh, come for a discussion. And obviously the last point is that like no, the ego clashes uh, comes in. So I would say that you know the technology is playing a very, very crucial role in today's uh, uh, challenging uh, factor in the architectural profession. So we need to question ourselves like no, where are we? Understand. So where are we in that? Are we equipped ourselves to meet the demands and meet the expectations of the client? Number two is the economy. The economy is again decided by a lot of global issues like now we all know that like now the oil crisis and then the wars which are happening because of that a lot of energy you know related uh, no uh, issues uh, which leads to health uh, related no issues inflations population growth urbanization economic policies and economic recessions like now we know that two of our neighbor countries are suffering you know even for a daily life so uh, then when we don't have money like now how do we think about like developing a nation and an architects in our role in, in in playing that so that is again the second crucial aspect the third one is again the opportunities like the opportunities again we again bring the globalization here where you can go and practice you know anywhere in the world and uh, the same thing is applicable to you know the architects throughout the world are doing practice like you no know, in channel like we know that Zahadit and a lot of other people like no, uh, they're all you no know, having their practice in, in in our part in India and particularly in Chennai, which again questions the role of the small size office and mid size offices. Most of the time it is getting bulldozed, particularly the most affected one are the mid size offices. The small scale offices anyway, they can survive with the local market where the globalization will not be having a major impact, but when it comes to the mid-size offices, like you no, know, they are the major, uh, the worst sufferer, you no, know, because of this uh, globalization. So, anyway, after graduation, either we are going to have uh, you now small-scale office, or we are going to join a mid-scale office, or we are going to develop our office into mid-scale or super-scale office or superstar architects. So that is again the third uh, uh, major challenges, which we can say that the fourth one is the demographics, like you no, know, the Willingness to update the latest you know, uh, technology or whatever is there in the market, but most probably the young people are willing to you know uh, adapt and but uh, the generation like us are in between and unfortunately even today most of the successful practice are in the hands of like you no know, slightly older people where they are not willing to update or willing to accept you know those kind of challenges still you know they are uh, they are they are managing with uh, their traditional uh, you know uh, practices so we need to know that like you no know, how are we going to you know uh, uh, adapt ourselves into that the next one is that the urban life is completely influenced by e-commerce like you no know, uh, today like you no know, we reluctant to go to any restaurants like we reluctant to go to any shopping malls but we do go for these other places for some other reason but if you look at you now the commerce which is happening in those places are really you know a big question and uh, everything is at home, like you no, know, everything is in your phone, which makes a huge question that, like you no, know, whether we need spaces for all those activity. Like you now, earlier, like you no, know, every semester, like we studied a different typology. We studied about like you no know, uh, hospitals. We studied about like you no know, schools. We studied about shopping malls, uh, office building. But today, because of this influence of this uh, e-commerce and then the technology. People work from home, so there is no question of like no office buildings or IT complexes and things like that. And you don't require any shopping malls because everything has been happening. Like so, we need to question ourselves. Like now, what are we going to do? What is what what is that? Like now, we are learning in the undergraduate program that like now we are going to you know put into uh, and now we are deciding like now whether to do a PG or not. See, all these questions are very very important, very very crucial for you to think and address. You know where we are standing. The last one is again the working practice that is linked with the earlier uh, you know challenges that is uh, urban life and influence of e-commerce, the influence of technology, digital, particularly uh, post-pandemic. Like you no, know, the last two years have taught so many things. Like you no, know, 
that questions like you no know, basics of so many things whether you need you know spaces for offices you need spaces for classrooms you need spaces for you know uh, delivering you know work all those things are very very you know uh, important so these uh, particular factors i want all of you to think twice and uh, uh make yourself you know assessed uh, on a genuine basis and then see where you are standing and uh, you can you can think about this will give you you know serious you uh, know uh, advantages that like you no know, you need to do a further more study or you need to add you know more qualification to your cv this all of us are very familiar in the last two years you know uh, the working practices the pandemic showed how remote and digital working was not only possible but frequently beneficial for architects a lot of architects i know one of my close friend like who had a very big office in chennai and then today like you no know, he has closed his office he is running his office virtually but he is telling he has more people to work compared to the physical office in this sense so a lot of other things are completely you know changed upside down about like the way architects operate and architects work and as uh, social distancing continue even today the future of architecture may trend towards you no know, remote working so we have to gear ourselves uh, uh, towards you know uh, not uh, uh, working and meeting together and uh, having a proper you know architects office setup and things like that all these things will give you confidence to the young people because most of us are thinking that like you no know, to start an office it's a huge investment like you need to have a prime location lot of other things required but but all these things are having both positive and and and, and negative so the situation you now giving two contradictory you know aspects both challenging and offering you know opportunities i told you challenging is that like you no know, it gives you a clear picture where we are and what we are and how we can able to enhance ourselves by adding more degrees or adding more uh, techniques or technology and then our uh, you no know, yeah our, our 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 undergraduate program alone is not going to be helpful for us because the curriculum is in such way that it is not giving you that opportunity to meet all this uh, you know demands uh, but at the same time as i told you it's an opportunity because like you know, if you are young it's i i could say that it's really an opportunity for you to you know catch you know uh, the the possibilities of what the technology can offer to you today this is a very interesting you now uh, report by rba so they conducted a survey to understand that you uh, know why are the architectural practice do architects you know exist in 2025 which is a very very scary question like you now they are asking because you no know, in uk 40% of architects job is dropped like from 2008 so which is a very very you know uh, significant move uh, and that made rba to conduct uh, you know research and survey and then they came out with the report called building futures okay which they are saying like you no know, whatever i was uh, discussing earlier which talks about global economy is having a major role to play economic resilience and uh, transformed business practices and projects that evolution of these uh, trends okay are questioning three major questions like you no know, they are throwing in the report one is like who will design our built environment in 2025 because when we say that the, the profession of the architecture itself is going down and then lot of mid size offices are closing and lot of superstar architects don't practice in uk but whereas there are offices and practices like narun foster and all like if you look at you no know, their website like most of the projects are outside uk not in uk so uh, they are questioning like you no know, who will design our built environment in 2025 it's just another three more years like you know, according to Uh, their report what role might these trained architects uh, now have in 2025 because we are all undergoing like five years of degree program which is considered to be the guinness world record for uh, the maximum you know effort for an undergraduate degree program but after going through all those thing after going through the crit after going through the cry and everything but the major question comes like now where are we going to stand ourselves like no what uh, role like we'll be playing are we playing uh, a project manager's role are we playing a facilitator role are we playing an architect's role and what exactly no we are going to do it already they are saying that only 7% of the architect has got a chance to design the entire building 
93 percent are part of the building activity. So that is by Council of Architecture I'm talking about. OK, so. All these things are like no scary in one sense. Another sense is like, no, we are all at the age of 22 and 23. Uh, legally, you know, we have to take you know, every decision in our life, you know, logically and and and, and sensibly. So but we need to take up challenges. That is what you know important is because when you don't take up challenges, like you will not be successful. OK, in, in wherever you are, forget about architecture, wherever it may be. So we need to understand what are those challenges in front of. That is the reason why I am presenting this in front of uh, you rather than discussing about like no uh, why you need to do uh, what all the things are there in, in, in master's uh, degree and then if it is so, if you could able to find an answer to the first two questions, the third question which uh, which comes in as uh, how might practice change by 2025? So do we, I already told you like, no, we don't no longer required a traditional office with the receptionist and you will have the draftsmen and you'll have architects and you have your contractors side and it has to be, you know, located in a prime location, nothing. So it is questioning like, no, how the architectural practice itself is going to be right so that finally they conclude and say that like no radically you know you need to come out with a different approach for an architectural profession which we can see from 2025 onwards so that is a very very scary but an eye opener kind of report which all of us have to you know think about this is an another you know survey from american institute of architects in which like no they are trying to integrate all the building related you uh, know uh, uh, people in which like no they are saying what is the growth rate for 2026 we can see that architects growth rate is only 4% interior design is 4.9 and landscape architects you know surprisingly it's 6.2% thanks to all energy environment and this kind of you know awareness plus People also going back to nature, so that is a good sign. Okay, so we'll see that like no other than architects, you know, all the others are having like no a kind of uh, 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 a gradual, you know, uh, good increase and in, in, in terms of the percentages, whereas uh, uh, the architects are having only four percent. But don't look at that. You no, know, just go to that next point by 2030, as per the Council of Architecture. India is going to need 50% more buildings than today as against US, which needs less than 9%. OK, so we are our economy is growing like anything. We don't get affected much with this global issues and a lot of other things. So they are projecting that like now our buildings are going to uh, grow 50% more than what is uh, today's demand. So compared to 9% uh, or lesser than 9% of US. So we have a lot of scope, but all we need is like we need to prepare for the challenges because I told you many superstar architects from global, they are operating in India. So they're just waiting for an opportunity to grab because they're all much advanced in terms of, you know, all these technologies and they're all well informed about what are the challenges and technologies and things like that. So we need to, uh, you know, because I'm, I'm giving you all these things are based on the facts, based on the US Bureau of uh, Labor Statistics. So uh, it's not not that like I'm, I'm talking on air, like now I'm talking with something else in my mind. I'm, I'm giving you all those facts and figures. It may look scary, but we need to clearly know, uh, understand what exactly we need to prepare for our uh, future. And uh, the most uh, specific challenges I told you, the first and prior most important thing is that the Internet of uh, Things, because everywhere you go, you leave a huge amount of data. Whenever you access your mobile phone, whenever like no every mobile, everything has been connected with your 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 mobile number. Your, it has been connected with your mobile phone, whether knowingly or unknowingly, you are leaving hell number of information on the net. Okay, for the people, and every industries are grabbing you know those informations, and then they are using it for their purpose to take decisions on that. The first, the challenge, what we need to do is like. How are we going to take advantage of those Internet of Things like which we are also part of it, which many people are leaving it so that like no, we can take clues from that and we think like no, how do the generations think? How do the community think? How do people are thinking that 
which all the areas people are like, no active. Why a lot of the other things like no, which are happening with that uh, a huge uh, domain called Internet of Things. The Internet of Things are useful in in UK and other area where they are using now to monitor, you know, a lot of data and, uh, uh, you know, other uh, uh, sensors to monitor the old age people. They're trying to you know, give life to them. A lot of other things like, you no, know, recently, you know, Apple has uh, introduced the new version of iPhone 14 and watch and uh, uh, iOS 16. Everything is based on this IO, IoT only. Everything like you know, they are saying like a crash detection. They are they are talking about uh, fall detection. They are talking about uh, uh, ladies' uh, menstrual uh, you know monitoring. A lot of other things like you now which are the future is going to be based on this uh, Internet of Things. So how are we going to equip ourselves into that? We cannot say that like you now we are not techies. We are not like you no know, the people like uh, we can uh, we can uh, go with that and then. The next important thing is that the data driven technology is supporting urban ecosystems in your mobile phone. Like you can see walkthroughs, you can send a lot of videos, a lot of things you know, which are attached with this, like you know, the data driven technology, which support this urban ecosystems and particularly, you know, uh, with Alexa, Siri and a lot of other things. You know, people are making their life very easy using this uh, data driven technology and then the last one, when you do all those things, like the climate is changed, the sea level is raised, and then we can see this unprecedented rains, and we don't no longer like know the climatology is going to be used as like this is the summer, this is the winter, this is a rainy season. You cannot predict like, how much amount of rain like now we all seen like now 2015 rain in Chennai and Pondicherry and uh, Bangalore recently, and uh, a huge amount of flooding is happening in in desert. So how we are we, no longer like no, we can say no climate responsive architecture is going to be uh, the future. That is what no, the, my next point is that sustainability and energy efficiency is dead. So we need to think about like no regenerative architecture is the new green architecture. So no longer we can uh, think about no longer we can discuss about like you know uh, energy efficiency, climate responsive, sustainability. So we need to think about like how are you going to generate you know energy? How are we going to generate you know? So many other things, ecosystems, economy, and then how are we going to have a self-sustained community and things like that? The last two things are really scary one, robotics and automations. Like recently in Hyderabad, this Indian Institute of Architects National Convention, uh, one of our, uh, you know, Indian, uh, uh, that is the JNTU student who is the dean of uh, famous institution in, in uh, you know, uh, US, he presented a, a topic on robotics and automation in architecture. A huge amount of you know, technology and investment has gone already into it. They are saying the future of building construction already started like more than 10 years before in US on robotics and automation. We still think that like no, it may come some point of time. Already like no, we are having this uh, 3D printing in our uh, part, which again questions like no, so many other architecture and allied fields like now what are we going to do so how we are going to equip ourselves to include robotics include 3d printing into our uh, you know architectural practice how we are going to think beyond you know energy efficiency and sustainability how we are going to include the internet of things all these things are really you know the huge challenges uh, in front of all of you whether you know you are going to practice architecture or whether you're going to study, you know, post graduation and then do your practice. So you need to keep, you know, these things uh, very, uh, very much in your mind that, like, you know, you have to prepare, you no, know, for all these things because it's already happening. It is not that, like, you no, know, it is going to happen. It is already happening more than a decade. Like, you no, know, we are still lagging behind. Okay. This is again an important topic which I wanted to throw a light on all of you that. Uh, role of women in architecture because earlier no people used to say that like in a class of you no know, uh, 35 or 40 like you no know, around 30 ladies are there how many are going to practice so we don't see like you no know, the competition but today you can see that like you now that is the data given by council of architecture earlier it is only 15 percent of licensed female architects okay in the country whereas the scenario is changing the scenario is changing from 80% male to 53% male 
to 47 percent and it will again change more uh, that is 80 percent female to you know 20 percent you know male uh, uh, kind of profession because why i'm saying is that people are reluctant earlier because we were we were not treating you know, the, the gender you know, equally we were not uh, because the priority for the ladies are completely different their family is important for them they need to take care of so many other things and then the timing a lot of other things which are making them as less representation so far but today the council website itself is given that from 80% they are moved to you know sorry from 20% they are moved to 47% and again thanks to the teaching profession a lot of female architects are working it's a very very positive sign and then i could give you that link you know uh, from the website which talks about 23 you know the world famous uh, women architects like you now you can see that zahadet and uh, a lot of you know faces like we can see that people have won prisker prize and and you see all these things no longer like you now we can we can you now uh, keep them uh, without trading equally so this is again going to be the opportunities as well as the challenges for the rest of the people. And then we also need to think about like, no, is MRK is necessary for practicing this survey? Again, I'm taking it from the uh, US only. There you can see that like, no, 56% of the people after graduation, they do their uh, private practice and 21%, which is the next uh, huge significant, like no, they're going for further education and then Again, 7% of the people are going for architectural of non, uh, you know, uh, firms like you no, know, they do the allied business like you no, know, they don't no longer into it. And 3% of the category comes under the academic and uh, related uh, activities. And then 2% uh, comes under, you know, work outside of architecture. And 11% uh, comes under undecided component. So we need to see that there is a positive movement or positive uh, because like to practice architecture you need your undergraduate is more than sufficient but why the 20 percent of the people still wanted to do you know uh, for the, the the post graduation which means like you no know, whatever they studied at the undergraduate level may not be sufficient like you no know, they need to you know uh, strengthen their uh, uh, their ideologies or or, or overcome their weaknesses to face the challenges which are there in, in front of them. Okay. Another uh, advantage is for India is this age factor. We can see that this is an interesting graph given in Council of Architecture website. So we can see here uh, almost 50% of the people registered with Council, Council of Architecture are below 35. That's what I was telling that this latest technology or an eye opener or, you know, uh, 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 a kind of benefit for the younger generation who are going to be almost 50 percent of the architects are below the age of 35. When it comes to US, it is the reverse. 65 percent of the people are in 13 percent and 55 to 64 age are predominantly 22.4. And you can see here more than 45, almost more than 50 percent of the people are there, but it's completely different here. 65 percent is under 45 and 50 percent is below 35, which is again a positive sign because the younger generations are willing to accept the challenges, willing to learn, you know, so many other things. And most probably like you now we could see you in that category of like, you no know, 50 percent, which are below 35 percent of uh, population of architects. So compared to the developed countries like, you no, know, we still have that advantages. And uh, when we discuss about all those things, keep all these things in your mind and then trying to do a self-assessment before you choose for your master's uh, degree program. For that, I, I, th I think I can give you a kind of uh, template which RABA has you know, given for the architects and for the architecture students after third year. They want to conduct a part three examination in which they're asking these three basic questions. One is, the every architecture student has to write a CV for themselves about like it's it's a it's not a fancy CVs or whatever it's a genuine CV they need to write number one number two is that they need to do about the self evaluation in self evaluation like they need to talk about their career okay and what are all those inspirations what is the kind of 
professional development they overcome over period of time and knowingly or unknowingly what kind of you know uh, uh, their design philosophies like you now they develop things like that though they need to write an essay of 3000 to 5000 words in, in 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 length and then they need to undergo minimum 2 years of practical training and after that they need to demonstrate an understanding of professional practice and everything as a examination then only they will get a license you know we are all lucky people because without doing any of those things after 5 years of our graduation we simply get our license including you no know, all of us are fortunate that like you no know, getting imagine oh you know, this person has to undergo 5 years of uh, you know course then he need to clear this with the minimum 2 years of practical experience in an architect's office after graduation so i would say that like you no know, all of you to follow the same thing if you are you no know, very much concerned like you no know, you want to continue your learning process like without any break you complete your your post graduate immediately otherwise just you no know, for our sake you no know, if whether similar to rba whether co is asking for us or not that is a different issue at least like you no know, let us do a self assessment before we think about you know uh, what kind of masters program like i can because it is completely on your own undergraduate program nothing is on your own so whatever is offered to you like you need to take and you need to complete it but masters you can decide where your interest are and what kind of you know uh, uh, course like you, know, you want to do and uh, depends upon your strength and weaknesses so similarly like you work under some architect trying to gain some two years of experience and in the parallelly like you try to uh, read travel try to you know understand so many things try to attend you know lectures you know conducted by uh, the professional bodies like iar or many other organizations so that you understand how the fellow architects are you now uh, doing what all those uh, contribution like how they are struggling or successful a lot of other things like you now you can get inspiration and then you can decide upon like you now the plan for the masters based on the outcome so when you do so what is the difference between a br and mr program i uh, i i did uh, told the people earlier bachelor of architecture is a five year program we all gone through that and uh, it's a first step towards getting license in coa but in reba i told you it's completely different scenario you need to undergo that part 3 examination and part 4 and part 5 is something else part 4 uh, part 4 and part 5 is the examination that is the last two options part 3 is that the, the sa and and cb and self assessment and uh, a masters degree opens the door to the professional and academic world so it's not that like there is a myth that people talk about that if you do a masters in architecture you can only qualify or you want to become a teacher only then like you now you take a but your your professional practice is like broad enough your thinking process is completely changing so please don't keep that myth that like you no know, only for teaching like you now want to uh, do a masters in architecture and then with the masters degree your quality of work and prestige you know increases so your earnings for salary will be greater not to that great but definitely people will look at you differently compared to an undergraduate student and then mr postgraduate the program uh is a specialization program once of uh, one choice general architecture i would say that jack of all trades and master of uh, none because you you cover all the aspects you, you you studied about landscape you studied about project management you studied about you know uh, you know conservation you study about urban design you you cover like you no know, wide spectrum of you know uh, practices which are there so that like you will understand you know uh, many things and and general architecture but the next question comes is, is doing architecture uh, in masters is worth it yes definitely it's a rigorous uh, discipline a lot of thinking on innovation using collaboration in analog and digital methods of design understand and analyze intricate in the relationship between various parameters such as time space even people and the subject it train the students to think critically carefully and clearly about the issues that faces the problem doing master is all about rediscovering and redefining about preconceived notion about what we know because we think like now whatever we do is architecture but it gives you a different dimension 
a strong emphasis on self learning and research you know pushes you uh, to be very uh, best of yourself it will help you know everyone to refine their critical thinking abilities so this comes like you know the broader you know dissections of what and all like you know, we didn't learn in the undergraduate degree program so that we keep all those things as a checklist like you now when we do a masters uh, degree program so one is design constitutes only 15% of the complete architecture project like whatever we do in the studio as a as a as a concept or a design presentation that which not even covers like you know 15% of the total complete uh, which means there are 85% more which you need to learn to complete a project number 1 number 2 no architecture schools in an undergraduate level talks or teaches you about the business skills like about your entrepreneurships and and how to run a business successfully but we have a subject called professional practice advanced which talks about like you know uh, uh, various skills and how you can able to pitch for a, a project and there are so many other things which are which also gives an another direction that the words are more powerful as uh, you know drawings so how you are trying to communicate to the people and and things like that and uh, during our undergraduate program we never realized the site visits are going to be extremely important but the two years of practice gives you the context based design or design relating with the context is going to be very very vital and important so that gives a different perspective about your 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 design approaches and take construction classes seriously i don't know how many of us have took that uh, building construction classes seriously most of the students like we come across or we would have done that like you no know, copying from one person like was done in master copy and you would have copied from somewhere else but we never question we never take construction classes seriously we never give a different detailing for the same you know uh, window or a door so please uh, this undergraduate program or degree gives a very serious you know uh, uh, question that like take construction classes uh, seriously and your college doesn't matter when you go for the job so nobody ask you like you no know, whether you are coming from this college which is not even heard of whether you are coming from a nationally important institution no your skills are matter at the end of the day your portfolio or the skills which you demonstrate at the end of the day which really matters so don't bother about like now which college you wanted to study and passing out so that is again a crucial point which i wanted to tell all of you and focus on architectural details again which is getting connected to the construction classes seriously and site visits and things like that get involved with as many opportunities as you can so many architects we come across designing furnitures designing so many you know other aspects apart from you now their architecture so they are trying to create opportunities they are trying to involve themselves with many other opportunities like you now which they can contribute architecture is not just design so all forms are different so we need to really care on that speed and schedule is important we never bother about schedule or speed in an undergraduate program whenever there is a design deadline first thing you come to your mind is that like you no know, when i can get the postponement okay so you never think that like you no know, within this time i want to complete this project so that like you no know, i am doing justice or to the project whatever may be right whether it's qualitative is the secondary it's an additional dimension but the speed and schedule is always important then your idea or concept you may have a great idea or great concept but if you don't deliver it in time it will not happen because all these things you learn only in a practice you will not learn in an undergraduate uh, degree program and uh, do not take design strategies you no know, from school too serious because school always like you no know, we talk about a flame boy and kind of an you know, approach we we always attach lot of stories and things like that but don't take those design as a strategies for approaching of your 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 uh, design solutions communication is an art then one at one things i learn architecture school i really understand i really know like one uh, statement that if you don't convince your grandmother then you are fail in your design okay that is one of the you know important uh, aspect you need to learn in that one at one things i learn in architecture school which talks about if you don't convince or if you don't you know convince your grandmother you are failing your design so 
portfolio networking is more important than marks or grades. So don't bother and don't go behind marks or grade. It will automatically take care. But your, your networking and portfolio, that is going to be very important. And don't get caught up with the old school architectural firms, which means like people still follow traditional practices. Don't bother about what all those challenges which I was talking about to you in the beginning of the presentation. So try to find a firm which is relatively young and youth, or I'm not talking about youth in the sense of age. I'm talking about their approach. Okay. The firm may be very old, but they will ready to you know, adapt you know, to the technology. They're ready to adapt to you know, the challenges which are there in the architectural practice of today, uh, the beginning of the presentation, whatever we discuss. So try to get those kind of offices and, and, and see like you know, where you can play a crucial role in that. Okay. And excellent sketching skills are not required. So please make sure like you don't have to be a very excellent sketch maker, but that doesn't stop. Like you need to complete the half, other half. There are other ways also. You need, you use the technology to compensate the sketching skills, right? So don't get you know, uh, worried that you are not able to perform your sketching you know, properly, but you develop. I, I know that like you know, there was a person like you know, called Shivakumar. I don't know whether I can say that. He was there in SAP like you no know, in 2002. And you won't believe it, like, no, you don't have both his hand, right? So he knows that, like, no, he cannot sketch, he cannot, you know, draft. He has only that artificial, you know, uh, uh, limb. But you won't believe it, no, I never came across any person in 2001, I'm talking about, very strong in the technology. And he was teaching for me. He was, like, no, almost like 10 years junior to me, an undergraduate, but... He taught me the digital process and you know, our digital architecture in my master's level. Today is like you no know, successful in Singapore. So what you guys need to do is like you need to find another way to compensate that. You need to find another way to communicate. And team management, as we know that whatever we do, architecture is only 15%. The rest 85% is based on how you are managing the other people, your teammates, your contractors, your suppliers, vendors, so many other people. The economy plays a huge role in the construction industry. You may have Bill Gates or Adani as your client, doesn't matter. But the economy always become very crucial and an important criteria, which we never bother about it in during our undergraduate program. So in postgraduate, like these are all the checklists I want all of you to keep it in your hand. Develop interest beyond architecture. This is what the Postgraduate course also offers it. It tells you like you no know, architectural photography. It gives you subjects on architectural journalism. It gives you subjects on, on, on pedagogy and architecture. So all these things goes beyond architecture, like you no know, what and all, like you no, know, you can learn beyond architecture. Architects has to involve with the community. This is again the pro bono kind of uh, activity. Very unfortunate that like you no. Know, the profession of architecture is very much associated with, with architects, but unfortunately, the involvement of the architects with the community is very, very less. The medical profession, you can see that, like, no, they do a lot of like camps and other things. Like architects, we hardly do that. And uh, lawyers, like, no, in the regular profession, like, no, they are asked to take the pro bono cases, like, no, periodically. We don't do that. So you also need to think about a small a you know, contribution of yourself to your community or to the you know design studio projects which can be you know, we have seen that like you know, a lot of people like and i like you no know, we have seen that many people are presenting such kind of work that it's really surprising it is really nice to see that like you no know, architects an individual or a community like you no know, they are doing a lot of involvement with the, with the with the people and and their you know association the next one is very important that please read read architecture at least like you start with the magazines so that it will be colorful you'll see images then you can develop like you now reading the other you know research journals because if i tell you to start with the research journals like you now you'll be throwing like no you'll be hitting me because that's completely boring statement but if you start reading you know architectural magazines at the at the beginning but you'll develop that interest you know to read read that will widen you know, your, your perspective and your thinking. And the next one is 
observation is very very important for that please travel a lot please travel like a, a short uh, tour a lot of people are like having a bike like you no know, during the weekend like you take a break from a regular course like you no know, 3 4 days and trying to go for a travel it's really worth of it and whenever you travel everyone is having a camera right now everyone is having an iphone phone not necessary that like you have to equip with uh, uh, very you know uh, costly you know, slrs or whatever and uh, today like you know, all those mobiles with 48 megapixels 128 megapixels nothing but you need a you now you you just have to record it like you no know, you you are you are part of this you went there because all those things will somewhere or other like you no know, will link you know your your thinking process long time back like we have, we had you know an interesting you know uh, discussion in ia about role of cinema in architecture where maniratnam was talking about like you no know, how is is idea about like you no know, uh, bombay or or uh, roja or so many other things like you no know, or the the, the interiors like you no know, the importance of interior design in monoragam played a significant like you no know, role amongst the common man that like yes a small change can make a big difference and totadarni uh, was talking about how they could able to you know uh, uh, put the sets like of tarabi or whatever here fishi sridam was talking about how lighting can play a crucial role in perceiving an idea of these two okay so not necessary that like no you have to be master of that just just click and try to you know record it in such way that your observations will be useful some other time so you can have an interesting discussions on 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 a movie how it can relate to your design uh, or like a lot of architects office like you now they are doing it i think triplo uh, studio you no know, tahir every wednesday evening or i think second week of wednesday evening like you no know, they are calling like you no know, some people who have done an extraordinary work in any field you no know, to their office to have a discussion they keep it that may be useful to them in some other you no know, area or when they were uh, doing some design discussions or design decisions so not necessary that like you no know, uh, which is important which is relevant to architecture but just just enjoy just be as you are the last one i want to tell you that architecture education never ends so that will give you a clue that will give you a great you know uh uh what do you say uh, encouragement for you to go on studying like you no know, not necessary that you have to do a course it it can be anything so that is what like i was uh, giving you that first slide it's it's a long process and you will rediscover like whatever i gave you so far that uh, things we don't learn much in undergraduate program this i'm talking after 30 30 32 years yeah 32 years in 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 school of architecture and after 27 years of graduation we we learn like you no know, so many things like you no know, we have we have practiced and, and and that made us you know where we are today so but still our education continues still our learning continues so what are the career benefits or opportunities of completing mr program so you want to become a mature architect yes with some specialization in the field of architecture salary increase you want to teach you want to be constantly evolving you know that you know good design makes people's life better you want to be passionate about designing meaningful spaces you can be your own boss with a higher confidence the next question comes is again this we have so much of you know uh, discussion on that forget about the monetary benefit but there are there are other dimensions which you can add into uh, you know by doing your masters uh, degree program designing of course i told you this riba as part of licensing they are doing it but i would recommend all of you to work for 2 years like a virtual riba kind of scenario and then decide for masters or if you think that like no you don't want your your study process get interrupted by or it get stopped by you know uh, this practice or whatever then you complete it complete it one stretch and then 
go for your practice or whatever you are thinking. The next one is like, no, uh, guys, uh, am I audible? Is it okay? Hello? Yes, sir, audible, sir. Please continue, sir. Yeah, okay. The benefits of uh, MR degree program under NIST or uh, universities like now or uh, institution affiliated to NIST, it's a world run university, uh, recognized all over the world. It's a state run university. And uh, the syllabus are revised every three years. Like you can see that last year we were discussing about 2019 regulation, but this year now we have 2021 regulation for you guys. So it gets revised with an input from the best academics and industry experts. There is a very strong system to monitor. There is someone to monitor and question and uh, a very intensive mapping of course outcome and program outcome. So these are all the benefits like now. You will get when you do your master's degree under an university. Uh, if you ask uh, doing master's in architecture is worth it. Yes, that is what like you now we are discussing about it to do a self analysis to understand what are the challenges in front of you. So all those things, if you want to do your self practice branches like landscape architecture, sustainable architecture extra will help for securing best salary. The building and engineering management or digital data analysis is better in India, but for uh, plan is options on environmental planning and transportation planning are on demand. OK, and uh, this year we are starting a bachelor of planning also in, in SAP. Architectural conservation uh, good design, though very good uh, master's uh, courses, but uh, it attracts you know, very lesser private uh, clients in India. Product design and industrial design also excellent choices for architectural graduates. Again, it is catering to the limited kind of uh, uh, people. Only graduates in architecture are eligible for admissions to the master's degree program. So you need to do your bachelor's degree. And after that, like this is an another advantage because like uh, when you go for M plan, uh, apart from architecture, like engineering and civil or geology or other courses also eligible, but for MR program, only an architectural graduate are eligible. So that is also another advantage you know, for you to uh, choose that. Apart from that, like we also have this uh, master's in construction engineering management, master in infrastructure design management, building engineering management, master's in design, real estate and infrastructure management, safety engineering and management. So all these things are the other courses uh, which are there in front of you. So now that important uh, aspect is like you now when we uh, frame the syllabus of 2021 regulations. Uh, obviously, the collaborative learning which came into as a major focus because uh, the post pandemic has, has, has an eye opener for most of us to integrate technology as a critical part of you know 21st century classroom. Uh, the classroom design also need to support uh, uh, technological advancements. Uh, this is not covered under the syllabus, but it is up to the individual institutions to provide this kind of infrastructure in such way that it is easy for the people to uh, have you know, a smaller discussion group or a larger discussion group or a smaller discussion group discussing about the books or focusing on the projects and uh, Eliminate you know, the concept of teacher's table so that the teacher also can be part of this maker space and uh, part of you know the studio. So you can you can you can uh, recreate you know the, the 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 idea of collaborative learning, particularly you know uh, after this uh, uh, pandemic. So there are certain subjects which are also you know helping you to go for this uh, collaborative uh, learning, like processing design. Contemporary architectural practices, climate change and adaptation, resilience is so. These subjects again uh, makes you to integrate technology, integrate like people to discuss in a smaller group or larger group, or convert the classroom into something else. Like probably these are all the few images which I wanted to show it to you. The different arrangements of the classrooms, like no, you will have projectors, you will have uh, small discussion. Somebody works on. Uh, uh, their own. So you'll have in the same classroom like two, three groups like you know, which talks about like so many aspects. 
discuss about so many other things. So you are trying to create an environment in such way that this is only possible in master of architecture general. Because I told you in the classroom, there will be people will be choosing different, different you know, subjects as their, as, as their relative, as their interest. So they can form a smaller groups like that. And then they can also you know, nurture you know, their, their talents and then their uh, you know, uh, ideas further. If somebody is like interested in doing an entrepreneurship, like you no, know, they can like-minded people can join and then they can also think about how to start and how to you know build up their company and what all those factors. So you can see here the different arrangements of the classes you now which has been made, you know, particularly after this pandemic, okay, because we are having batches, they're having social distancing, the numbers in the classrooms are getting reduced. Plus, master's degree program, thanks to the ACT, that it is only maximum of 20 in a classroom. So, make digital education interactive and feasible. So, even though we take advantage of the digital education for the pandemic period, but let us use the maximum potential of it as a uh, uh, interactive and feasible session because many people may not be able to visit your campus to address the students, to share their experiences. So you can you can make I'm sure like you no know, you are you are doing that but you can still think of you can still think of that we came to know that uh, the last year's uh, you know Indian School of Architects uh, annual convention completely disconnected virtually and we we cannot imagine such people can come in physical mode and addressing like to the architectural fraternity okay so we took that as a challenge that is a very successful one so we could be able to interact with so many people not to travel, not to waste, and a lot of logistics and other things like everybody could connect, you know, themselves and they are making the best use of, you know, uh, digital mode. And thanks to the digital advancement now, like the 5G, like you know, we're expecting in short. So connectivity should not be an issue. Okay. And and uh, all of us are like, you no, know, even everybody, you know, even the, I have seen that like, you no. Know, Recently in a YouTube, like somebody is talking about like uh, Google uh, uh, Google Pay Pichakaran. So uh, a beggar now is, is carrying a Google Pay with them. So uh, we, we can we can see the potential of using a digital uh, you know mode. So try to make best use of it. Like you now try to pass it on to your students who is uh, willing to join in your institution on on this uh, platform and. Uh, being a management institution, like no, you have those liberty and you have those kind of things. Like you can do it, you know, without any uh, uh, issues. And uh, re rethinking the remote learning process and should are uh, moving away from I teach you learn kind of concept. So please, uh, at PG level, don't try to uh, encourage you know more of a lecture kind of you know uh, learning. So rather, like no, you go for the Socratic uh, uh, method where like a lot of questions, a lot of interactions, a lot of discussion kind of learning, which can, uh, you know, happen, right? This is again an important uh, uh, aspect of your, your 2021 syllabus. We have a subject called advanced professional practice, which will cover how to establish an office, what all those features and things. So you can, you can not only like, you know, bring in people from architecture, you can also bring in successful entrepreneurs from any other field so that like they know that like how to mobilize fund, how to pitch in for like you no know, projects, how to get projects from corporate, how to get projects you know, from government, a lot of other things like you now they can get to know. Even an, an experienced architect learned this like after so many years, even then like you now he doesn't know whether it is correct or not. So there are a lot of infrastructure development which are happening, okay, uh, uh, called, you know, uh, infrastructure and management and uh, so soft skills again which talks about like how to improve your communications and how to you know develop uh, your your other uh, uh, you know attitudes which will make you a good uh, entrepreneur at the end of the day so all these things are uh, part and parcel of your syllabus and uh, this is again given in the website like i don't want to uh, go into details of these things like you become an architect with the ability to discern okay uh, problems and identify solution through both deep and broad parameters gain employment in architectural firm building sector through offering a specialized knowledge 
be part of an organization that influence policy in government and other uh, places. Okay, become a teacher or researcher, apply critical and investigative and analytical thinking towards future society. So become an entrepreneur. So again, so all these things are the objectives which are there in the syllabus. I'm not, I'm not adding any of my own version here. These are all the objectives of uh, now why you need to do the master's uh, here. The again program outcome, which talks about independently carry out the research because if you are in teaching, like you no, know, you'll be carrying your research to the next level. Write and present, okay, uh, substantial uh, technical report. So this again, like you, know, you can practice in the design studio. You can tell people to submit a technical report as part of their design submission so that they know that like you know, what are all those uh, documents which they need to attach because in real life you know, that is what happening intensify thoughts techniques and knowledges with the demonstration of mastery and specific uh, areas of architecture resolve architectural problems you know with due consideration to environmental issues larger urban and social context and contemporary tools and methods you can apply for your design solution but when it comes to you know the content of the syllabus you can see here the core courses are only 14 subjects whereas we are given 22 subjects as an elective which means a lot of options for you to choose you can you can recollect that the collaborative learning environment with this so that like you can offer a lot of electives uh, to the students so that they can they can streamline you know these two years uh, according to their uh, you know future they want to Practice means like you know, they can choose subjects which will enrich you know, their practical uh, approaches or experiences. If somebody wants to be an entrepreneur, like you know, how we can build, somebody is going to be an academician, like how we can develop on that. So you can choose subjects, like a lot of subjects like which has been done. And uh, we have also reduced the lot of compulsory working hours so that like you spend a lot of time in in these subjects and, and and researches and other area plus there is also like two new subjects which has been added in this 21 regulation one is the professional ability enhancement courses another one is the audited courses so these are the two courses which we have added you know into uh, the new uh, during this and uh, as part of the new uh, uh, education uh, policies the semester one focus on design process. It's 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 a 21 regulation which I'm talking about, which completely changed because the earlier one, the first semester was focused on sustainability and regenerativity, but now the first semester, you know, they are focusing on design process. The second semester, you know, the course is focusing on sustainability and regenerative. Third semester, they're focusing on urban related issues. Fourth semester, like that is going to be on thesis. In total, it's going to be 110 credits. You can see here. The audited courses, uh, which which is really you no know, interesting. Actually, I was really fascinated to see these uh, subjects. One is English for uh, research paper writing, disaster management, Constitution of India, Natramilalakiam. So a lot of things like you no, know, it's variety. And apart from that, your your department also can offer any other courses as as audited courses, or can also take courses from NPTEL or some other platform. OK, uh, so the, 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 the choice is like more and the freedom of su subjects choosing is also more. All we need is like now we need to do a self assessment of. Where we are and what we are going to do and then trying to plan this two years in such way that like no, your two years are going to be the most beneficial years in your career. And uh, Lastly, I just want uh, you guys to think about this uh, seven things which I showed last year also uh, by getting my master's in architecture. You cannot research something that you are not interested in. So you need to develop an interest towards some area. Okay, it may be energy, maybe sustainable, maybe product oriented, maybe you know, uh, uh, you know, pedagogy oriented. A lot of things like you no know, or psychology oriented. So you need to develop. A research in some area and you can travel in that right nobody will tell you what to do so at master's level don't expect like you know, the faculty members will come and tell you okay do this and do this and all those things 
but you should do all this homework whatever i am doing i am just trying to ease and giving you certain kind of di direction so that like you need to pick up from that and then do a kind of homework and then see what else like you no know, you can add more and more so that like you no know, you can be clear you must be proactive again academic is about more than just become a professor you have to follow your intuitions again there is always time for change it's a long journey my dear friends please connect my first slide that learning is a long journey and try to enjoy the ride so thank you so much please see that uh, uh, a graph which i shown in the left hand side to get the perfection like you need to have more effort you also need to have that effort to be in a qualitative way with a lot of you know uh, what do you say uh, skills and uh, uh accumulation of lot of you know efforts okay so best wishes to all of you and uh, uh i'm i'm ready to uh, take any uh, queries or any doubts i given you know my uh, mobile number and and mail id so that like if you want you can also you know uh, send in your 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 clarifications and doubts i'll be really happy to help you out and uh, you can also call me for anything required thank you thank you so much thanks for the opportunity uh, thank you professor elungo uh, it's a nice uh, session actually uh, totally we all enjoy and as you rightly said uh, this masters uh, is going to sharpen us for further uh, uh, research or further understanding architecture to the, the, the fullest uh very really nicely you have narrated that uh, uh, thanks for that and also as you rightly said uh, the st the studio which uh, once again uh, i totally agree with you that the mrc studios uh, with the kind of the the variety of uh, the electives that the new regulation 2021 offers uh, gives a kind of a wide range a palette of options for us to look at or drive ourselves towards those subjects of interest uh, even uh, at times uh, i uh, tell the students that this particular uh, masters general architecture especially from anna university uh, gives you that variety if you want to do urban design you need not go take a masters in urban design instead you can do general architecture but you can become an expert in urban design the way the electives have been uh, framed very rightly you have touched upon and i'm really happy uh, uh, that uh, uh, we think alike on that so that decoding the syllabus uh, uh, which the way i was decoding them to the students last year as well as this year you have rightly given that insight uh, to the entire uh, uh, the audience over here listening to you so that's one uh, great happiness and also one great insight that uh, we could uh, get that uh, right the another one is uh, the way you said uh, the studio need not be a single studio it can be groups yes sure you are right about it because this syllabus gives that opportunity of a kind of a, a collaborative smaller groups within the studio uh, that is possible that is very much possible and uh, we have tried that last time in our uh, With our master students who are in the second year now, and there is another one more uh, advantage of that as you rightly said. The third, uh, the technology, what you are talking about, the 5G, where today uh, the way we saw the IEA convention happening totally online on a platform where uh, we could uh, meet architects from US and uh, all over the world, various time zones, but sitting in our uh, living room we could watch them and uh, it's really that's a really the technology which has played that or made that possible and uh, that's true similarly here this masters program with the 5g coming in we can have them in telepresence which is possible in uh, 5g virtually they will come and stand before you and teach you and uh, the telepresence is one uh, big uh, 
a boon what 5G is going to give us. And with the onset of uh, uh, the AR, VR technology and the mixed reality, it's definitely it's going to be a very enjoyable studio and definitely our uh, management is also looking for a kind of a dedicated lab towards this AR, VR and mixed reality studio. So where uh, we will be in a position to encourage the masters as well as the bachelor students in doing that. So that yeah, way, there's no dearth of... Actually, I just wanted to add one point in that. Yeah, see, to, to, see, we know that in future, the, the digital and, and virtual you know, link is inevitable. And we have to take full advantage of that. But yes. what we also need to tell the students is like, no, they need to use a technology in such a way that they can explain and and and, and present you know, their designs and True. not only to us, not to the clients also. Yes. They don't yes. have to see the you use the technology as the latest one, but you still go for AutoCAD drawings and other things <laughs> and presenting it. And at the end of the day, nobody's going to you know uh, understand or, or you are not in this side or that side. So they also need to develop, you know, uh, taking the advantage of the technology at the same time, how to develop you know, their presenting skills, which will make them interactive and, and interesting true. in a virtual environment. Yeah, true. sorry, you carry on. Carry. True, true, you are right. Uh, because now the way you said, you know, the 2D thing is going to go off. It's all going to be 3D only and BIM is going to play a very important role in uh, working with the plugins of the metaverse, what you're talking about, the AR, VR and the mixed reality. So, uh, as you rightly said, students have to rise up. And one great thing is that these students have the potential to rise up. As far as the technology is concerned, they are tech savvy. So these are some of the conclusions which I like to uh, or some, summarize. I would like to summarize your talk uh, in a nutshell. Uh, once again, uh, thank you for the great uh, inputs and also touching upon uh, the the importance of architecture and architecture as a happy profession and also a profession to celebrate life. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. It was such, yeah. uh, such a happy and enlightening session to hear from one of my guru in my uh, SAP. So thank you so much for the enlightening session, sir. Thanks, Inia. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so if anyone have some questions, you can raise hand button. You can click the raise hand button or you can uh, unmute your mic and ask your questions. And I just uh, to Professor Ilangu, I just want to give one more insight. Yeah. Uh, the, the outcome and the, the objectives and the outcome of the programs you know that uh, uh, the outcome, the objective versus the outcome. Uh, this time uh, in the Board of Studies, uh, I myself personally got involved in making that uh, matrix for MR General Architecture. Great, great. Uh, which was uh, uh, left untouched. For a long time, uh, and uh, this time I could uh, talk to Dr. Sita Lakshmi and uh, took it on me, and I did the uh, the matrix correlation matrix so that uh, uh, the professors as well as the department and all of the heads will be in a position to allot the electives based on the correlation matrix. So because there's a variety of uh, subjects available, a palette, as I told you, a palette of subjects available as electives. Uh, the professors, they themselves should not be confused which to offer, which not to offer. And similarly, the head of the department as well as the head of the institute. So that correlation matrix has been made personally this time and it has been passed by the committee and it is now in place. So I would like to highlight that here, uh, that we have participated effectively in doing that uh, for the MMARC General Architecture Program. From it as. Thank you so much, sir. Let us end the session. So, the vote of thanks, I request our beloved HOD, Professor C.K. Praveen, sir, to deliver the vote of thanks. Uh, good evening, everybody. I hope I'm audible. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, actually, as Inia said, uh, uh, Inia, Elungo, sir, is not just your guru, he is <laughs> my guru as well. Uh, sir has been my professor in my undergraduate years. I hope he remembers. 
uh, sir, actually, it's so wonderful to hear you because the last time we met, it was I think you were on supervision and we just had a very small talk. But after so many years to hear you again uh, in a lecture like this has been a wonderful opportunity for me. Uh, this goes to show the uh, the talent that sir has in the way he expresses himself. It was always interesting. It's it's for me. It's almost like deja vu. I'm, uh, I can feel how I felt in my undergraduate years, or like 15 years past now. Uh, it's wonderful to hear you, sir. And I think this uh, entire interaction was meant for people who are going to take up their masters. But I think it's also very uh, useful for those who have done it and uh, who are also now in the teaching in the academia. Because I think everything he said, I think applied to me as much as to anyone who's also looking forward to doing his masters. And especially the bit about the things that don't they don't teach you in architecture school. It uh, it makes a lot of sense. And I hope the people who heard him. Uh, realize the truth and the honesty that there was in this uh, in the speech. Uh, so uh, thanks a lot for the wisdom that you have imparted to us, sir. Uh, it's been an amazing one hour of uh, a lot of information and wisdom. I think it will take us time to absorb and to uh, reflect on it. So uh, it has also given us a very good opportunity for introspection. So uh, thanks to you for that, sir. Um, hopefully we will again and more people will be able to hear you from with us and a larger crowd so that uh, uh, it's your this experience is not just limited to the few who have attended it and it will be to a larger population. Uh, again, all the thanks to you and uh, really grateful for the time you have spent with us. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Pravin. Thanks. Lovely words. Thank you so much. <laughs> God bless you. Sir, one more question. One person has asked two questions yes, have sir. come. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry. Yes. The student yes, has asked which is advisable like doing MR immediately after BS or having a professional experience prior to pursuing MR. And another question is uh, how the curriculum settings are sponsored. These two, you just give a talk on it. The, the, the first question I can understand. The second question is that how the curriculum settings are sponsored. Mm. Okay, if they could able to elaborate the question is fine. The first one is like, you no, know, in my presentation itself, I told like you can take this RABA uh, kind of method uh, of doing your curriculum CV writing, number one. Number two is like, you no, know, you identify your strength and weakness in that. And then you work for two years. That is the most idealistic part. But there are many people who want to complete their entire you know, education at one stretch. OK, and then take a but those people also might be very clear what exactly they want to do as their post graduation. Some people may be interested like from third year onwards about urban design or landscape or whatever, but this specialization can change when you work in some office only. So I would say. 70 30 like 70 percent like no, I would say that like you work for two years at least. Gain some knowledge and experience and and uh, Obviously, you know, your interest also can change. Like when you work, the perception of your, your interest also can change when you come into practice because you'll realize like what you see in the studio is completely different from what you practice. So that will give you a you know, clear picture for uh, doing your masters of uh, at least like uh, two years of uh, working. Even I think the council also now says that, you know, after your undergraduate three years minimum for teaching and uh, after post graduation post graduation one year of experience is uh, uh, required for teaching so they emphasize more of a practical experience so that we'll understand the difference between what we learn in studio and what we you know learn in practice because it's a huge decision joining a master's degree because I told you undergraduate, you don't have any choice to join or you don't have any choice to do various types of you know, BR program. It's only one program. Number one, number two. First two, three years is going to understand like you no know, your your basics, mostly non architecture. And third year, maybe six semester onwards, like you'll be getting into your profession, but you have limited time to know about various nuances of architectural practice. So in that case, definitely if you do a PG program, it's really going to you know, benefit number one. 
Number two, that like you know, you're already an architect, so you don't have any pressure to perform, you know, uh, well or marks or anything. You're not going to lose anything. So that leaving and studying without any pressure will will give you great benefit, like you now for your performances. So these two, like I would say, like you no, know, are the answer to that question. So maybe like you no, know, very few might wanted to continue at one stretch. There are people like, no, even abroad also, many people are working for one year. That one year time, no, they're trying to gain some experience and then they apply. And then maybe after a year, like, no, they join. So they spend about like, no, 18 months to 24 months to understand or rediscovering themselves, know where they are strong and where they want their future to be in those lines. The second question I'm not able to. Second question, they have yes, reframed it as how the curriculum is set and how it influences today. Curriculum, that's what I said. The curriculum is given more freedom and flexibility to the student because MR general, you you are we are giving exposure to you in various directions. One is like, no, you want to practice as an architect, we are giving you more options. If you want to teach, we are giving you more option. If you want to become an entrepreneur, if you want to become a journalist or if you want to become something else as so the the, the uh, curriculum and syllabus is giving you wide wide you know opportunity and varieties for you to pick up so it is not giving you one one area for example as uh, rightly parasudar has said like now if you are going to do a landscape architecture means you will be studying all the subjects related to landscape architecture only you will not be studying in a wide spectrum of subjects which you can do that's what i said like no from the day one within the classroom you can offer like varieties of electives to the students so that like no you'll have smaller groups which will be formed based on their interest few groups like wanted to do only teaching so they can choose all those electives which are leading to te teaching critical thinking architectural pedagogy and there may be overlapping of practice and teaching there may be overlapping of like entrepreneurship and teaching. OK, so entrepreneurship skill, like if you want to take it, like you can take subjects like, you know, infrastructure management. You can take like professional ethics and practice at once. OK, so soft skills, right? So like this, you no, know, these are the subjects which will you know shape your future. The way you know you want to uh, continue after your post graduation. Is that OK? Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Um, um, um. Thank you, sir. Does anyone have any other questions? No, ma'am. We can go. Thank, thank you. Okay. Thank you so much for the enlightening session, sir. Looking forward to have more webinars like this. Thank you, sir. Thank, thank you. Anytime, anytime. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, Jeremy, sir. Thank you, Praveen. Thank, thank you, sir. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Anya. Thank, thank you, sir. All thank the best. You, all the best to all of you. Okay. Thank you. So thank you. So we'll see some other day where there is a significant uh, now impact on these things. OK, so maybe I'll be really happy to see that, you know, whatever we discussed today has been reflected in the classrooms uh, or sure, the sure. design process. Definitely. Definitely. Thank you. We are trying all that. We are trying all that. All that we are trying here and uh, definitely we'll keep trying for the uh, thank you for yeah. your, uh, your support and uh, Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, everyone. Thank Bye. you, sir.